Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of New Tech Tuesday Tutorials. My name is Richard Evans and today I want to go over cropping. Now cropping is a way for you to take an existing shot and then remove different elements of that shot for use however you want. So let's dive in and take a look. All right, all right, all right. So here we are in the TriCaster TC1 interface. And the first thing that I want to point out is that you'll see that I have my mix effect uh, number one on the left side. And then right here in the middle, I have my input number one and same thing in my program and preview over here. And this is just to show you uh, how these are going to marry to each other. So uh, right now I'm on my input number one and I have all of my effects on right now, like my live matting and my cropping. Let me go ahead and turn those off by clicking on the gear icon here. Right, I'm going to turn off my live matting and then I'm going to turn off my source as well, my cropping of source. So now you can see that this is where the magic happens, a little behind the scenes of how I do these Tuesday tutorials. It's just me here at my desk with a little piece of green fabric behind me, some lights, and then I, with the power of TriCaster, embed that shot into a mix effect or into a downstream keyer. But I digress. Let's go ahead and let me show you the joys of cropping. So there are a few different places for you to turn on cropping within your source. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do it directly from my input number one itself. So I will do that by clicking on this gear icon on the input that I want to use. And then uh, under the image uh, tab on your input source, click the drop down for that. And we'll turn on cropping by putting a checkbox next to it. And this will allow you to trim edges off between 0 to 100% on your shot. So for example, if I grab the left with my mouse and just come across, you'll see, whoa, there we go. My shot's completely gone. So I can go all the way from the left, from the top, uh, et cetera here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, let's go ahead and just trim off the sides so you can't see how you know, you know messy my office is here. So I'm going to go grab the left side of this and trim it just a little bit over to about here, okay? And then let me do the same thing, but over on the right. I want to trim off that side of my office too as well. Cool. Now if I want, I can trim off the top here a little bit just to give you an idea, and then also the bottom so I can get rid of my keyboard. Uh, so you have your four options here for the left, right, top, and bottom, but then there's also an option you'll see for feathering. And what feathering allows you to do, if I turn that on a little bit, you'll see that that starts to take the edges of it of uh, these different croppings and then start to soften those a little bit. So I can go from all the way zero to 100 and you'll see that this starts to fade out as more as I go up. But uh, for my particular use here, I'm just gonna keep that at 0%. Cool. All right, uh, now all I have to do now is turn on my live mat, which I've already set it for before, and boom. Now I have this shot that I can use within my mix effect. Now I can do it directly from the input itself or I can also do it from within the mix effect. So let me go ahead and turn off all of the uh, live matting and cropping here within my input. And let me open up my mix effect number one. All right, now I'm in a uh, live set right now, which just has an A over B layer. And so on my input number one, sorry, my uh, layer A here, let me click on the positioning tool on the left. And then that will bring up a very similar uh, uh, positioning and um, uh, tools that we have for our different uh, inputs. So from here, let's go ahead and I'm going to open up position. And from this side of things, you'll notice that I have the cropping directly from uh, this image part right here. So uh, this is just within the mix effect, not on the input itself. So I can make my changes from this mix effect and it won't change my input number one at all. As you can see, if I wipe my left all the way to 100%, that, that doesn't change anything. So uh, I can go ahead and just say that. All right, looks pretty good. And trim the right side as well. About to there. Cool. And then on, I could also do it from within uh, this image tab as well. So it could be either the uh, row A positioning tool or on the image itself. Uh, but of course, when I do it from the image itself from here, that will change the different aspects of my original shot. So if you don't want to change the aspects of it, just do it from the uh, row A positioner or B, whatever you have it on. All right. And then from here, let's go to our image and I'll turn on my live matting. And boom, now you'll see mix effect is back where it needs to be. Uh, I have my keyer on and my positioning on, but that really hasn't changed much on my uh, input number one other than just turning on the green screen. Okay, so let me go ahead and reset all of these, and I'm going to put this back the way that I had it. All right, now, that again, all right, boom, that's done. Now you can also do this within your downstream keyers as well. So for example, let's say that I have on my buffer number one, that's over here in the middle, uh, I want to use that as a, a downstream keyer on top of my program video. 
So to make this uh, easier, let's go ahead and go to our downstream keyer number one here. And we'll select the buffer number one. Let's bring that on like this. Whoosh. All right. So right now, this is full screen, which doesn't really do us any good. What I want to do here is I'm going to trim the top and the bottom of this and also the sides so that I can use that as a, a downstream keyer. So let's go ahead and click on the gear icon on my downstream keyer number one. And then from here, we have the exact same options available to us. So I can go through on my DSK number one, turn on my positioning tool, and then do my cropping directly from here. Let's go ahead and do that, and I'll trim off just a little bit of the left and a little bit of the right. Top, move that down, and the bottom, and we'll do the same for that. And we'll turn on some feathering here just to give you an idea. So it'll be a cool little glowing logo here. And let me trim that up. This will make it a little nicer. There you go. So play around with these. You get them the way you want. Yeah. All right. That looks cool. All right, now using my positioning tool, I'm going to go ahead and zoom that down a little bit and let me throw that over here in the corner. And now I can use that however I want. So uh, if I go through on my uh, switcher row and go to say to this here, now I have a, a cool little lower third. So this is a good way for you to trim up different shots, place them however you want. I know a lot of uh, sports producers will do this as well, where they'll take a shot of the uh, scoreboard instead of bringing it in via data link, which is a little bit easier. But if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Um, uh, just go ahead and taking a shot of the uh, scoreboard itself and then they'll crop down that shot and then put it in the bottom corner uh, or at the bottom left, right, wherever, and then use that as a downstream keyer. So this is a really good way for you to embed in different shots and then cut them out a little bit so you get exactly the shot that you want in your broadcast. So as you can see, cropping is a really easy way for you to manipulate shots and then use them however you want. Now if you like this demonstration but want a little bit more, Make sure you go to newtech.com slash demo to sign up for free personalized demonstrations by yours truly, and I'll show you all the ins and outs of our TriCaster systems. Also, be sure to follow us and tag us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page for more videos like this. So thank you all for watching, and be sure to tune in next time for another edition of New Tech Tuesday Tutorials.